This is the game engine I have been programming for almost 5 years. With over 100,000 lines of code, countless hours of debugging, it's getting to the point where I can make games with it. You may look at game engines like Unreal and Unity and be like, damn, those are impossible to remake. But I found a little secret on how to make pretty good game engine. But hold on, relax. The question is, why would you write your own game engine? To answer that, let's start writing the engine. Because once you see how it begins, the answer starts to make a lot more sense. Alright, the first thing we definitely need is a window. And we're going to use this library called GLFW to do that. It's going to handle all the boring stuff behind the scenes that we don't really care about. So we can focus on the fun part. So when we take GLFW and initialize the setup code for it, we have a boring black window right here on the screen. It doesn't do anything yet, but this is the beginning. Now, the reason the window is black is because we do not have a graphics API set up right now. What's a graphics API? Glad you asked. A graphics API allows us to communicate with our GPU. Hold up a second, I know it sounds complicated, but listen. A graphics API sends instructions to our GPU. We tell it what to draw, and then our graphics card actually draws it. The big ones are OpenGL, which I'm sure most people have heard about and most devices support it. Then we have DirectX, which is mainly for Windows-based application. Then we have Metal, which is Apple's version of DirectX because you know Apple, they have to have their own thing because that's how they move. We have Vulkan, which is supported on a lot of platforms apart from Apple. Now, we have a problem. We probably should be using OpenGL, but OpenGL is very outdated. But the people who made OpenGL was like, you know what, we're going to make a new one and that's how they made Vulkan. Now, Vulkan is fast, it's efficient, but like all things in life, not everything will be perfect. You will be crashing out using it, so get ready. Now, I love myself very much, well, I hope I do, so I'm not going to waste your time trying to teach you how to set up Vulkan, because I promise you, there's like over a thousand lines of code and honestly, I don't even remember how all of it works, so we're going to skip all that. Yes, definitely! But once that's done, we're ready to render our first triangle, so get ready to cook. But hold on, sorry to stop the party. We gotta talk about one thing, shaders. Remember how I said the graphics API tells the GPU what to draw? Think of shaders as the middle layer between those instructions. You send data into the kitchen, such as the position, the colors, and the textures you have. And the shader decides how it gets cooked into your screen. In simpler terms, it decides what color each pixel on your screen should be. We have two main types of shaders, a vertex shader and a fragment shader. Let's start with the vertex shader. Its job is to take your 3D points, your vertices, and put them in the right spot on your screen. It's basically like saying, hey, you have a triangle? It's gonna live right here in the center of the screen. Now the fragment shader steps in and its job is to color that. It's basically the artist. It decides what color each pixel should be. But before those shaders can do their thing, we actually have to give them something to draw. That's where vertex input comes in. Think of vertex input as the ingredient list of our triangle. It's going to be a bunch of numbers, but we know these numbers represent something. For now, they're going to represent a position and the color of each vertex. Once we send this information to a vertex shader, and then we call the draw function in the Vulkan graphics API, boom, we have a triangle. Do you remember in your first programming class when you did your first hello world and you probably felt like a genius? Well, this is the equivalent but for graphics programming. Let's go! Looking at our beautiful triangle, I think it's time to answer if there's so many game engines out there, why build your own? And honestly, there isn't one concrete answer. I'm not gonna give you the generic, oh, you're gonna learn so much, cause we don't care. Really <laughs> Let me tell you, we don't care. I think it's more of an individual thing. Some people build their engines because they want control, some do it for a challenge, and some, they might just be lonely in life. Our triangle is looking great, but there's still one thing we can add to make it look even better. Textures. For that, we need to understand what UV coordinates are. Currently, our triangle is only taking two vertex inputs a position, and a color. Now, we're going to add a UV coordinate. 
UV coordinates are numbers mapped between 0 and 1. The GPU connects these UVs between the triangle's corners. It knows which part of the image belongs to each pixel on the texture. Without UV coordinates, we would just have a smeared image. It won't look great at all. We can actually do something really cool. We can take the texture and apply an offset of the color and have this cool effect on our triangle. Since we have a good understanding of how 2D objects are drawn, it's time to go 3D. But first, we need to talk about some math. Nah, I suck at math. The first things are vectors, basically just a collection of numbers, usually with three axes called X, Y, and Z. Next, we have a matrix, which is actually just a collection of vectors. Each vector in the matrix represents an axis in space. The vectors in the matrix help us move, rotate, scale of an object. There is actually a lot more that goes into this, and I can't explain it all. But there's an amazing series by 3BlueBrown on linear algebra. Go check it out, because it's going to be very useful for what's going to happen next. Now, assuming everyone here now understands what matrices are, it's time to build a camera. A camera is built up of two matrices, a view matrix and a projection matrix. The view matrix represents the camera's position and rotation, basically where you're looking from. But instead of moving the camera, we actually do something cool. It moves the entire world in the opposite direction. So, if the camera moves back, the world moves forward. If the camera tilts up, the world tilts down. We do it opposite. Now, I'm obviously not smart enough to do all this math myself. So I use this library called GLM. It has this function built in called GLM look at, and that basically builds me a view matrix. Next up, we have a projection matrix. This one decides how the image is projected onto our screen. We have two main types of projection, perspective and orthographic. Perspective projection is how we see things in real life. Things farther away look smaller and lines seem to converge at a distance. Orthographic projection makes everything stay the same size no matter how far away it is. It is flat, almost like a blueprint or a 2D game. Again, I'm not smart enough to do all this math. And GLM has another function called GLM perspective which basically creates me a perspective matrix. At the end, we multiply our camera's view matrix and projection matrix by our object's position and guess what? We have a working camera. In games, almost everything you see is made of a triangle. Funny enough, most shapes in the real world can be broken down into triangles too. The best part, computers love triangles. They can render millions of them in real time. So, a 3D model is made up of vertices, those little points we used to build our triangle earlier. Only this time, there are thousands of them, forming complex 3D shapes. But here's the catch, storing all those points takes space. So we do a little trick to save memory. Instead of repeating the same triangle vertices, we use an index buffer. It tells the GPU which vertex to connect to form each triangle. So now we don't have to repeat triangles again. We have a vertex buffer which stores the vertices of each triangle and an index buffer which stores how we connect each point to form a triangle. A 3D model is built off of thousands of vertices and indices. But here's the thing, loading all these vertices and indices from a 3D model isn't that simple. Every model format stores that data differently. Luckily, there's a library called ASIM. It handles all the messy stuff for us, loading the model, vertices, indices, and even its textures all in one go. So, we load the data using ASIMP, and then we send all this data to our shader, and with one Vulkan command, VK command draw index, boom, we've got a 3D model in our scene. Wanna know a secret? I'm Batman. Alright, now this is amazing, but we're just getting started. There's still so much more to cover, like lighting, materials, and physics. Stuff that really brings a world to life. But hey, hey, wait, I did not forget my promise. I said I had a secret to making game engines. Well, I kinda lied. It's not a secret, just something super helpful. There's a YouTuber called The Channel. His series on building a 2D game engine taught me almost everything. Go check it out. And if you want to go deeper, hit up Learn OpenGL, Vulkan Guide, or Vulkan Tutorial. Follow along and build your own version, cause that's how you really learn. Well, this is the end of part 1 of the series. Next episode, we're going to talk about lighting. So, like if you like, dislike if you dislike, and make sure to subscribe so your life stays upright. Peace.